So this is a, a right primary surgery for otosclerosis, and since I haven't been uh, uploading videos on primary stapes since uh, now many a long time, I think it would be interesting to show you uh, again a technique like this, which is always the same transcanal approach for right here. Can I see, please? So this is uh, 12 o'clock, 3 o'clock, 6 and 9 o'clock. And at the moment, I have already elevated the uh, tympanometal flap following a skin incision running from 6 o'clock to 12 o'clock. And we are now facing the incus, the and then the stapes. Donc on voit bien l'enclume et l'étrier. Uh, so this is, you can see, the quarter tympani, which I always try to preserve. So first, I dissect a little bit the corda, the la corde du tympan, hein, dont je vous ai parlé tout à l'heure. So I try to preserve it. And I will open up a little bit the, cor the canal of the corda. Hein, attendez, bon, le canal, euh, crochet pour le canal. I will try to elevate a little bit more the corda tympani. So I just use this very strong hook. And this helps me to elevate a little bit more the, the corda by opening up the canal of the corda tympani. Crochet pour le canal encore. Voilà, cannelé. And of course we have a pretty good view of the middle cleft, especially uh, the ossicle chain and the uh, and the round window and the promontory. On voit bien l'ensemble le, de l'anatomie hein, de l'oreille qui est là. Avec, euh, je vais vous montrer ça dans deux secondes. Je, je dégage la corde du tympan pour bien pouvoir la protéger. Donc voilà, dissèque. Voilà, là j'ai gagné un petit peu. Voilà, voilà donc ce qu'on voit ici c'est euh, l'enclume, la tête de l'étrier, ce qu'on appelle le promontoire qui est là et la fenêtre ronde qui est ici. Voilà. Donc la fenêtre ovale à ce niveau-là. Uh, what we need to do now, of course, for the next step is to have a clear, uh, safe exposure of the facial nerve and the parallel process of the state standard in order to have a clear exposure. So I will use now the curette. Bon, il faut exposer le nerf facial. Donc on va aller réséquer l'os du conduit avec la curette pour pouvoir bien avoir l'exposition du repère principal qui est le nerf facial à gauche. Voilà, ça commence à être... On voit bien le nerf facial maintenant qui commence à apparaître. petit peu plus ici pour pouvoir bien accéder à la partie arrière de l'étrier. Ok, that's fine. Let me see. Now I will, of course, check the ossicle chain mobility, but first I need to separate the increase from the stapes. Voilà, on va aller tester la mobilité des osselets. Et dans un premier temps, pour ça, il faut séparer l'enclume de l'étrier. So you can see a very nice view. We see if I move the, the man is already the incus is moving. But first I need to separate the incus from the stapes and then I will be able to check uh, the ossicular chain mobility more accurately. So I want to know where is the joint knife. So what I do, I elevate a little bit, I pull a little bit the incus and you see the position of the joint. Voilà, on sépare donc uh, l'enclume de l'étrier with this joint knife. Now I can check the ossicle chain mobility uh, separately. Voilà, j'ai séparé l'enclume de l'étrier, ce qui permet d'aller tester la mobilité d'abord du marteau et de l'enclume, et ensuite de l'étrier depuis la, la partie de la tête, et on voit qu'elle est complètement bloquée. So you see a very strongly fixed stapes from the top of the head. OK, so we keep going on. Vous mettrez une fraise neuve, s'il vous plaît. We'll cut the tendon now, of course. Bon, on va couper le tendon. And we're going to start the drilling out procedure of the stapes superstructure. Voilà, on va aller maintenant fraiser 
la superstructure de l'étrier en commençant par la branche postérieure et ensuite la branche antérieure. L'aspiration s'il vous plaît. So I use a 0.7 mm diameter diamond dust bird. Donc c'est une petite fraise diamantée de 7 dixièmes de millimètre qui va me servir d'abord à découper les branches. Donc je vais aller découper la branche postérieure. So you see I'm placing the suction tube on the other side of the posterior cruise in order to stabilize the uh, stapes where I'm drilling out the superstructure. And I'm just leaving the diamond dust doing the job without any pressure. Okay, looks good. It's done. And now we need to cut the anterior cruise. So I will, of course, use again the suction tube on the other side. There we go. And I think I can remove now. Can we d'abord, peut-être? Now I need to remove the superstructure. Voilà, les deux branches sont coupées et on laisse la platine pour l'instant dans la profondeur. Donc je vais aller retirer la superstructure. Euh, la pince, s'il vous plaît, peut-être. Là... So I need to remove the superstructure now, the residual superstructure. Crochet aussi, s'il vous plaît. Non, pardon, euh, trois de chou. Oui. C'est quoi le fic tape his head? Okay, fine. Now we have some fibrous tissue here. You can see the adherence here that we have between the, the incus and, uh, and some kind of uh, fallopian canal, crochet. So I will use a hook to remove all this possible uh, fibrous adherence here, because if I leave it, it would be a problem to place the incus. The, the, I mean the vein graft, I mean the vein graft. Can they? Okay. Okay, all is fine now. I'll remove the fibrous tissue and now we have a better access to the uh, stapes foot plate. I think there's some adherence again. I need to see that. You see this? No, but I think it's going to be fine. I need to be sure. I just want to be sure that it's not going to uh, create problem for me to place the prosthesis when I will be at the time of placing the stapes piston. Okay, let's see what I can do with this. Un set, s'il vous plaît, un mesureur. I, now I need to measure the distance from stapes footplate to incus to determine the prosthesis length. Voilà, donc maintenant je vais aller déterminer la hauteur entre la platine et l'enclume de façon à connaître la longueur de la prothèse. And this is the second notch, which means 4.5 mm. Voilà, 4.50, c'est la, la hauteur que je mesure. Pardon, 4 mm, c'est la longueur. 4 mm. The lower one is 3.5, the mid one is 4, and the upper one is 4.5. So I will cut the process at 4 mm. Let me see something. I'm just... Trois de chou. This is just creating some issues, maybe. I don't know. It's just a mucosa, but... Sometimes, if we leave it, if I can remove it, it's always better, but it's not always possible. Because, you know, this is thicker, and uh, I think this might create some problem to place the, the loop around, safely around the incus. Okay, now it's much better. I pushed it, I pushed it upwards. So now it's not going to create any problem, because it's far away from the mid surface of the incus. So I'm not going to remove that because it's too thick. So I leave it like this. And now I'm going to perform the fenestra using uh, again the 0.7 millimeter diamond dust burr. Well, on va faire maintenant la la stapedotomie. Donc uh, l'ouverture sur uh, l'oreille interne à travers cette platine. 
avec une petite fraise diamantée de 7 dixièmes de millimètre encore. On fait une ouverture de 8 dixièmes de millimètre. So I use 0.7 millimeter diameter suction tube with my left hand and 0.7 millimeter burr on my right hand. Donc on utilise hein, une... Oh là, elle tourne pas bien là. J'utilise un, une aspiration de 7 dixièmes euh, à gauche et la fraise de 7 dixièmes également. I have a problem with the burr, so I need to change that. Let me see. Non, c'est pas bon, hein? Okay, we need to change the, the, the system because it's not working well. You saw that it was uh, um, moving too much. So it's not safe for the full plate, so I need to wait, we need to change now. Okay, now we are back into the middle ear with the new uh, drill, because I have some trouble with the previous one, so I hope it's going to work better. So um, I'm going to use again the 0.7 millimeter burr to drill out the full plate. And what I like to do, I like to start the drilling out before touching the full plate. That's just a trick that I have. And progressively, I also use the uh, sucker with my left hand. Donc on a une petite fraise de 7 dixièmes de millimètre à droite et à gauche j'ai un petit aspirateur de 7 dixièmes de millimètre pour contrôler le, 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 le sang qu'il y a et aussi petit à petit l'ouverture avec les liquides de l'oreille interne et on voit la progression du, du fraisage à travers la platine. Le principe c'est qu'il faut le faire tout doucement pour ne pas fracturer la platine évidemment. So you see now we are starting performing the fenestra and now I'm going to enlarge and finalize the fenestra in order to have a 0.8 millimeter diameter stapedotomy. There we are, and I'm using now the sucker close to the fenestra, but not at the level of the fenestra. And now we have a nice uh, opening, 0.8, 0.8 millimeter. Donc, de stapedotomy, uh, cette ouverture calibrée à travers la platine. Mesureur, s'il vous plaît. I just, I like to measure again sometimes, just to be sure about the length. I, I measure four, but I just want to be sure about that. So sometimes I re-measure again after having performed the finestra, and I will add a little bit. I will add to 4.25, 4.25. Okay, so now we need to take the vein, which I pre-shaped before, and that was uh, quite a large one, so I'm going to cut it to make a, a small part of the vein, which I already took from the dorsal face of the hand, as usual. So the, we are now facing, of course, the intima of the vein, the adventitial side, which is the sticky side, the lateral side of the vein, is facing now the plate, and uh, and I will, of course, use this sticky side to stick it to the full plate. But this is a little bit too large, so I will reduce the size. I like to have uh, not a too large one, so. Uh, Okay, that's fine, and I'm going to take it with the sucker, which is now 0.9 millimeter diameter sucker. I will stick it to the sucker like this, and uh, sometimes I, I pre-shape it on a glass plate with a hole, but not in this case, I couldn't make it. So I will introduce it with the sucker over the foot plate and over the, the fenestra. Voilà, on va introduire donc la veine avec l'aspirateur et on va aller étaler la veine ensuite avec l'autre instrument. So I use again both both hands free. The one is a sucker with the vein, introducing the vein within the over window, and uh, now I need to stretch the vein with the needle like this. So in fact, I use the sucker to hold the vein and. Uh, But I like to stretch it. There we go. Now it's fine. You see now, thanks to the translucence, we can see the position of the of the fenestra, as you can see. I want to stretch it a little bit more there. Okay, it's fine. And now I need to prepare the prosthesis, which is uh, 
as usual, uh, 0.4 mm diameter uh, Teflon shaft. Donc on va préparer maintenant la, la prothèse qui est un piston en Teflon qui fait 4 euh, dixièmes de millimètre. You see the opening which is right at, at the anterior part of the, of the loop. Et je coupe le, donc le fût qui, est, qui fait 4 dixièmes de millimètre de diamètre. Et on va ensuite ouvrir l'anneau qu'on va passer ensuite et resserrer autour de l'enclume pour stabiliser la prothèse. So I'm opening up the loop, breaking the memory of the Teflon holding the shaft like this. And uh, I'm going to use now the sucker, 0.9 mm sucker again to hold the prosthesis and then to introduce the prosthesis within the fenestra. First, that's the first step is to introduce the shaft and then the next step will be to introduce the loop. Okay, so let's introduce now the shaft within the fenestra like this progressively and now placing the loop around the incus, rotating it like this and then placing it and then it works fine and what I need to do now is to crimp the loop and there of course the option of using a curve forceps but as usual I use I, I prefer to use the trick of the two hooks in order to close more accurately the loop so one the left one is used to hold the prosthesis and the other one to close it because I don't want to push the prosthesis too much into the labyrinth so you hold it with the left hand and that's it you know you don't need to close completely the loop voilà donc j'ai placé le fût d'abord ensuite l'anneau autour de l'enclume et je viens de le refermer avec euh, avec ces deux petits crochets voilà and now we are looking for what we call the bending sign and set s'il vous plaît I just want to be sure that the prosthesis is located within the fenestra, so I will look for what we call the bending sign. Donc je vais aller euh, faire un petit geste qui permet de vérifier que le fût, parce que là évidemment l'ouverture est masquée par la veine, donc pour en être sûr, on va essayer de déplacer le fût, et normalement il ne doit pas pouvoir se déplacer, on le voit se courber, là, ouais. donc ça veut dire qu'il est bien à l'intérieur de l'ouverture, et je pense qu'on doit avoir euh, une jolie vue sur euh, la fenêtre ronde qui est juste là, bon ça ne va pas être simple, mais... On peut voir euh, si on bouge un petit peu la prothèse. Voilà, on a un mouvement en regardant la lumière qui est à l'intérieur. On voit ce mouvement de la lumière. Ça veut dire que là, on a un bon mouvement de la, de la membrane. OK, all is fine now. I'm going to check it from, from the malice handle to, to be sure that it's going to work. And it works fine. And it's OK. So you, you saw that I didn't close completely the loop. But you remember that, remember that there's a memory, so we don't need to creep it completely. That's enough, just enough to avoid any dislocation of the, of the procedure itself. And of course, the end will be to place the metal cell, which I will be removing on the fifth day. Voilà, donc ce, ce petit pansement, je le retire au cinquième jour, comme d'habitude, avec le durable de la main pour la conduction de ce surtout. Allez-y, attendez, oui, Allez-y, ouais. Ok, thanks very much. Merci.